I'll use Gauss's law to calculate the electric field due to an infinitely long uniformly charged cylinder of radius r. So we'll draw our big cylinder here. And it will have radius capital R. And it will be uniformly charged with charge density rho. So rho is equal to the volume charge density, which is given in terms of coulombs per cubic meter. Okay, it's not a linear charge density, now it's a volume charge density. Okay, so case A will do inside, and that is for um, R less than capital R. Okay, so we pick our point inside at little r. We draw our Gaussian surface through that point. Our Gaussian surface will be a cylinder, the length of which we'll call L. It doesn't matter how long it is, it's just an arbitrary length. Okay, so working form of Gauss's law is the electric field is the amount of charge inside our Gaussian surface over the surface area of the Gaussian surface times epsilon naught. So the amount of charge inside here is equal to the charge density times the volume of that Gaussian surface and then the surface area times epsilon naught. Now the surface area that we use here for A is the surface area of the Gaussian surface through which the electric field pierces perpendicular. So it's only the curvy sides. It's not the top and bottom because it's the electric field skims across there and doesn't pierce through. So we have rho, volume of that Gaussian cylinder is pi little r squared L. Surface area through which the electric field pierces is two pi r l epsilon naught. And you can see the l's cancel, pi's cancel, one of the r's cancel, and we're left with rho r over two epsilon naught. Okay, so that's the electric field inside, a distance r from the center. Case B, we'll do outside. This would be for little r greater than r. So in this case now, we have our charge cylinder, infinitely long. But our Gaussian surface is now gonna be out here of length L and radius little r. Now little r is greater than capital R. So inside here is the capital R. Okay, and we wanna know just how much charge is inside this Gaussian surface. So just that part there. So the electric field outside is Q over A epsilon naught. And so it's still the volume charge density times volume gives charge. But now the, vol the volume is just this part in here, which is capital R for the radius. So this is rho times pi capital R squared L, because there is no charge out here in the um, region that goes out to little r. But the area through which the electric field pierces, the electric field is still out here going through our Gaussian surface. And so for that, for the area, we use little r. So it's two pi little r L epsilon naught. Okay, so this expression is different. This becomes pi, sorry, rho r squared over two little r epsilon naught. Okay, and that's for r greater than r. Okay, now we could stop there or we can do an expression in terms of the linear charge density as long as we're outside. So sometimes the, uh, the problem will give you a linear charge density and ask you for outside that rod. So if we want the relationship between linear charge density and volume charge density, the volume charge density is equal to the charge over the volume of a cylinder for any arbitrary length L. And then we see here that the Q over L is in fact the same as lambda. So we can write this in terms of linear charge density over pi r squared. 
So if we want to put that into our expression for the electric field outside, this is only outside, we can do that. So instead of rho, we write lambda over pi r squared. And then we write the r squared over 2r epsilon naught. And we see that this is equal to lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught r, which is the same as 2k lambda over r. And remember, this is only for r greater than r outside. Now, you'll recognize that that's exactly the same expression that we got for a really skinny rod. So when you have a really skinny charged rod, of which you never go inside, you're only ever outside like this, this is our Gaussian surface, um, we found that using exactly the same expression, E gave us 2k lambda over r, and that's in another video. Okay, so if you're outside of a very large uh, cylinder. It looks like a skinny cylinder. And you can use these expressions interchangeably. Okay, so that's it.